everyone. And uh, welcome to this service of all souls as we remember those people in our past who have died, those of our loved ones. Now you should have a view of the, the service sheet, so please join in in bold. So I call to worship. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, and a time to pluck up what has been planted. So we come together to remember those who have died and give thanks for their lives and for how they were woven into ours. We acknowledge the pain of being the ones left behind, but also acknowledge their going on to be close to God. And so this popular hymn, which I think, certainly for me, really feels what it's all about, as being a Christian believer and how God has helped us. Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided, urged and inspired us, cheered us on our way, sought us and saved us, pardoned and provided. Lord of the years, we bring our thanks today. Lord, for that word, the word of life which fires us, speaks to our hearts and sets our souls ablaze, teaches and trains, rebukes us and inspires us. Lord of the word, receive your people's praise. Lord of our land, in this our generation, spirits oppressed by pleasure, wealth and care, for young and old, for commonwealth and nation, Lord of our land, be pleased to hear our prayer. Lord, for our world, when we disown and doubt him, loveless in strength and comfortless in pain, hungry and helpless, lost indeed without him, Lord of the world, we pray that Christ may reign. Lord, for ourselves, in living power remake us, Self on the cross and Christ upon the throne. Past put behind us, for the future take us. Lord of our lives, to live for Christ alone. And so we come to our confession. And as we acknowledge our human frailty, so we call to mind the things that we have done wrong and bring them to our Lord for the hurt we have done in the past to those for whom Christ died. We seek forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the hurt we do now, which obscures the glory of the risen Lord, we seek forgiveness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the sins of us all and the world that hinders the future God has promised, and for our share in them, we seek forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Lord have mercy upon us and forgive us so that we may go forward into the light. Amen. So we come to the collect, which shall we say together. Almighty God, you judge us with infinite mercy and justice and love, everything you have made. In mercy, turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life and sorrow of parting into the joy of heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Who is it to condemn? 
It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes. Who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written. For your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted a sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, not anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John, chapter 6. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall choose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. This is the Gospel of Christ. Christ. I want to read you a poem. The place of remembering, whereas the work of grief is done, memory recovers its perspective letting the dead one go with aching sense of loss, opens the way to finding again a rounded person, gifts and faults, delights and irritations, make it possible to share again the jokes, the intimate glance, keep company unseen. Well, November is a month for remembering. It's this time of the year when we start seeing people wearing poppies, a symbol that we remember the lives of those lost in war. But today, as we gather here and online, possibly with some trepidation, to remember quietly those whom we have loved and who have died recently. It isn't easy to remember. It can bring back pain of our loss, it isn't easy to remember when a late relationship we shared had its difficulties, or when we feel that there were things we wanted to do or say, but didn't get the chance. Sometimes remembering is the last thing that we want to do, or are able to do. So don't underestimate the courage it takes to purposely spend time now, and knowing that we are with other people, all of whom have experienced loss, to remember and honour our loved ones in whatever ways feels appropriate for, our, for, for us at this time. The Christian faith has a strong tradition of remembering. As Jesus approached his own death, we're told that he shared a simple meal with his friends. He urged them to remember him every time they broke bread or drank together. He knew that he was going to die but he wanted his friends to know that he would never leave them. 
Jesus invited his friends to remember him every time they ate bread and drank wine, an act of remembrance associated with life and all that lies ahead, not simply what lies behind. I know that for many of us, there will be times of a day or simple acts that remind us of the person that we've lost. It may be as we close the curtains at the end of the day, or boil a kettle to, to make a cup of tea, that we say good night or good morning to the one we still love. Sometimes the act of remembering will trip us up as we seem to forget what has happened. At other times, the act of remembering is our greatest comfort and strength. I know that I always remember my father every time I get dressed, dressed up in this garb. This cassock was his. So he's surrounding me every time I take a service and wear this cassock. And that is something that I find really important and very comforting. But in the poem we heard, read, I said a few moments ago, she, the lady writes, Anne Lewin writes, of how as we work through our grief, our memory recovers its perspective. We don't just remember them as a saint, but we start to remember them the way they got on our nerves, or the things that drove us mad, or at least the potential for that to happen. But as we begin to remember the things that made us laugh and the things that made us cross, the things that made us proud and the ways they could embarrass us, it is as though the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle are coming back together again. When we lose someone dear to us, it's as though a jigsaw puzzle has been thrown up into the air and all the pieces have been scattered far and wide. And as we remember, those pieces begin to come together. Only the picture isn't quite the same. We have to look closely at what is emerging. But there, in this new picture, is the possibility that we can still love the one we have lost and that life, the life that we did share with them has made a difference to the people that we are now. Anne's poem talks of how letting the dead one go opens the way to finding again. It's a paradox and for some of us it may take years to reach beyond the aching sense of loss. But every time we gather some of the fragments together of that puzzle, a new picture starts to get clearer. Peter's letter to the Rome, to those in Rome who were trying to follow in Christ's way is a remarkable message of the power of the love in difficult times. He asks what power there is that can separate us from love and answer it by saying nothing. I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a powerful sentence that is. It takes courage to remember so take courage from Paul's words that absolutely nothing, not even our grief, can separate us from the love that we have shared with those that we've lost. Love is stronger than death, and love is God. Memories don't just connect us with the past, you see. Memories also connect us with the future, with hope and new life. And as the fragments start to come together, we see new possibilities emerging. May we become ever more aware of the bond of love that can't be broken. And in time, may we become familiar with that place where we can keep company, un with, keep company unseen. Even perhaps sharing again the intimate glance of love that, ca that cannot be overcome. But it's not just memories of our loved ones that we think about today. In the second reading from John, one of the most profound passages in the Bible. These verses contain truths that will never fully be comprehended by us. I found these words quite astounding. Jesus is telling us he told his followers that everything that has come to him
comes from his father, and that he, the son, will do everything that is God's will. And this is that for all who believe in Jesus, he will never let go. That's not just in life, but also in death. And he will never drive anyone away. There's a place for us all, no matter what. There are lots of times when we can learn that Jesus loves and cares for us, and that if we believe in him, we can learn and be aware of the love that he has for us. The fact that this love never ends and is there into eternity is utterly amazing. So we come today to remember those we have lost and see no more. We can be confident that only do we remember and give thanks for their lives and how their lives impacted on us, but they are also at peace in the ever-loving presence of God. So let us be comforted and bring our thanks to God for the love that surrounds us every moment of every day of our lives forever. Amen. And so we come to the hymn, which I think is loved by so many people. Make me a channel of your peace. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. And where is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. In giving to all men that we receive. And in dying that we are born to eternal life. And so we come to the moment in this service when we remember those people who are, have, we have lost. And for those of you online, I'm sure that as you're listening to this, you will bring to mind those people for you who you have lost. Nancy Eileen Fenwick, Nora Flavel, Peter Flavel, Ethel Gilbert, John Gilbert, Bill Griffin, Alan Charles Gordon, Brian Harris, Josephine Harris, Margaret Elizabeth Ann Heapy, Peter Hopkins, Beatrice Hopkins. Robert John Lewis, George Alexander Liddell, Teresa Kathleen May, Lawrence John May, Alan Maxwell, David Maxwell, Mary Maxwell, Stephen Maxwell, Alan Maxwell, Ian Maxwell, Andrew Miller, Neil Moore, Fritz Frederick Muller, Dorothy Muller, Gwyn Owen, Edna Perryman, Victor Perryman, Eric Rhodes, Barbara Mary Rhodes, 
Brenda Rose, Jack Sewell, Don Sinclair, Peter Speed, Pauline Stubbs, John Alfred Talbot, John Wainwright, Norma Joyce Wainwright, David John Marshall Warhurst, Lawrence Watson, Margaret Watson, Lawrence Jean Watson, William Watson, Edith Wheat, Fred Williams, Mary Williams, Joan Williams, David Williams, and there are many more people whom we've all been associated with over the years. Let us remember them as well. So I light a candle, as you may like to light a candle as well, for those of you that are watching this for your loved one. Give us grace, almighty God, to address you with our hearts as well as our lips. Teach us to fix our thoughts on you, reverently and with love, so that our prayers are not in vain, but are acceptable to you, now and always, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, let us pray now. For our country and indeed the whole world in the strange situation that we find ourselves in. We pray for those who have lost friends and families. We pray for those who are anxious about their own health and the health of the people that they love. We pray for all who feel that their mental health has been affected by living with the stress of the pandemic. Lord, be with them and help them to find peace in the midst of trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Although our daily lives are dominated by the news of the pandemic, we need to remember that life goes on in all the usual ways, good and bad. And so we pray for all who are suffering as a result of violence, thinking especially of the recent events in France. We pray for the people of America as they vote for the next president and then have to deal with the problems of their divided society that will occur whoever wins their election. We pray also for refugees as they struggle with the huge difficulties of their life all over the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our village and local area. We remember especially all who are living alone at this horrible time. Help us to be kind and generous to each other even when we ourselves are feeling anxious and finding life hard. And we need to give thanks as well for the beautiful autumn colours that we have for a few weeks. We thank you too for the love of family and friends, even if we cannot be physically close to them at the moment. Let us try, as Maggie writes in this month's magazine, to take each day as it comes and to find joy where we can, in as much as we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for the church everywhere at this difficult time, and for all who work to keep the churches functioning. We ask that the gospel of Christ may be the central message of the church to the world. Lord, 
in your mercy. Hear our We give thanks too for all who are working to seek vaccines and medication that will help in this situation. And we give thanks for all those working in hospitals, care homes and the community to benefit others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our We ask your blessing on all we know who are ill at this time. Let us be quiet for a few moments while we bring these people before you. We pray for all who have died recently and those who mourn, thinking especially of those who we have not named already in this service. Bless all who mourn with your love and care. And we pray for those who in this current situation are not able to seek comfort with family and friends as they would normally be able to do. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we draw our prayers together with the words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so the words from another very popular hymn, which I think is pertinent at this time. Take this moment, sign and space. Take my friends around. Here among us, make the place where your love is found. Take the time to call my name. Take the time to mend who I am and what I have been and all I've failed to tend. Take the tiredness of my days. Take my past regret. Let your forgiveness touch all I can't forget. Take the little child in me, scared of growing old. Help me here to find my worth, made in God's own mould. Take my talents, take my skills, take what's yet to be. Let my life be yours, and let it still be me. And so Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So peace, everyone. Peace. Peace, people here. Peace, peace everyone. Peace. Peace. And the blessing. May God's blessing be upon us, all who are gathered today, here and at home. May God's blessing be upon all who grieve. May God's blessing be upon us all as we journey through life in times of sadness and in times of laughter. Let us go out into the world and live our lives well and let us not be afraid. Go in the peace of the Lord. Amen. Amen.